could put another enchantment on the fucker. Hey dudes, how's it going? And welcome to Indigestion featuring scrolls. Allow me to read you, not the Steam and not the Destro description, because I didn't on there. Allow me to read you their description. Scrolls is an upcoming turn based multiplayer card game and board game hybrid from famous Minecraft developer Mojang. Scrolls offers a new and unique gameplay where you fight to outmaneuver your opponent on the battlefield using your destructive powers in your collection of magical scrolls. Tear your opponent limb from limb with the might of your summoned armies. Lay waste to defences with the obliterating power of your siege weapons. Or open up the very skies and let bolts of lightning shower his minions until only ash remains. The road to victory is yours to choose. Obtain the powerful scrolls and decide which ones you will take to battle as you fight to become the mightiest magician of all. There you go. Claire is indeed a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry! You're a wizard, Harry! It's basically Magic the Gathering with actually uh, uh, to be completely fair to the game it's got a really elegant way of getting around some of the flaws in magic the gathering mainly um being land screwed and being card screwed it gets around those two i'll, I'll, sh I'll show you it gets around those two um, things pretty elegantly actually i'm quite happy with that it does have a few of its problems as well i mean it's only just gone open beta so it's expected i do assume there's gonna be a lot of balance shit added in but it does a few things pretty well and not that many things wrong, to be honest. Pretty solid. Either way, I'm going to be playing just with Claire. There is, if you go to the arena, this t tutorial, which is pretty self-explanatory, and um, it's actually very easy to get the grasp of the game. Just from watching, you could probably play it. You don't really even need a tutorial. Quick matches, trials are actually really good because they're, they're like different scenarios and shit like that. But the best thing about them is that they add very easy gold. You can see they're 250 gold. 300 gold, 250 gold, fucking down into the hard ones that give like 450 and shit like that. There's a lot of 750 on that one. Hell of a lot of gold. Gold is used in the store, as you'd expect. You can... We can buy avatars with gold, the pre-constructed decks with gold, the just-for-you cards with gold, or random scrolls with gold. I'll quickly go over and then I'll get into a game with Claire. Random scrolls do what they say on the tin. If you buy a random scroll, it will be a random scroll from any faction. If you buy a scroll pack, it's 10 scrolls. But the difference, you can say, well, if you can buy 10 random scrolls, why would you buy a scroll pack which contains 10 scrolls? It's just the same, innit? Not quite. As it says here, 10 scrolls randomly picked from all factions. You're guaranteed to get at least two uncommons and one rare in the pack, though. So whereas the, you could buy 10 random scrolls, you could get 10 rares. But you were, but you could. It's more likely going to be a shit ton of um, commons and maybe a few uncommons. And maybe a rare in there as well, but you don't know. Whereas with that, you're guaranteed two uncommons and two, uh, one rare. So if you are going to be buying random scrolls, it seems advisable to buy a scroll pack instead, save your gold and get that. Claire informs me she's tried and got about 20 of the random scrolls and she's only ever got um, commons, is it? So no rares out of 20, so it is. It, it does seem very recommended. I mean, feel free, to, um, feel free to say otherwise, but it seems recommended to get scroll packs. If you like, well, I don't want the random stuff. I I only want energy or growth or order. You can do that as well, but it seems in the beginning when you're just trying to build up, you know, your card collection just to get going, I would recommend scroll packs, just for you every week, which I would. I, 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 I was saying this to Claire, I'd like to see like almost like a Steam sale kind of like philosophy of every 24 hours change these cards around, but you can see why not, because when there's only limited cards in the beginning, you're probably gonna get to buy a lot of them to begin with. But anyway, they might change it, who knows. But either way, every week, this this pack of six basically, well it's not a pack, but these six cards get rotated around and you know, another random six put in there that you can buy directly. As you can see, I've already bought Tool and Shit and um, Drydick Power. So pretty good if you wanted to, you could just buy them and then trade them if you really want to, like I could buy these two rares and then trade them off. But so, it's basically like, it's inciting some trade and also like you can say, oh actually I wanted that and buy it. So it's pretty nice, it gives you a diet, it's there when I go, well, I want a tool initiate but you know, I have to buy energy scrolls and I might not fucking get them and stuff like that, it's a lot of gold spent, whereas you could just spend 500, bang, there you go. Like I said, worst case scenario, you can say, well, I'll buy that shrine and I'll try trade for a couple of tool initiates. Stuff like that, so that's pretty good. Pre-constructed decks. When you first buy the game, you get a pre-constructed deck for free. One of the three. 
Bear in mind, however, from what me and Claire's discovered, you can't trade your precons. So if you get the energy preconstructed deck, and then you go, actually, I want to play green, I'll buy the green, don't be expecting to trade off your energy precon, you're stuck with it. You can't trade them. From what we've gathered, anyway. Yeah, yeah, like, like it's in my case. I mean, I threw down for some shards as well. Just to buy the precon so I could play around with them and shit like that, similar. And. I selected energy precon as my free one to begin with. That I cannot trade. That is locked in forever now. It seems like that anyway. Maybe they'll change it. Maybe I've got the wrong end of the stick, but that's what it seems like. However, the other two precons I bought with shards, I can trade. So just bear that in mind. Avatars, I mean. I can see why you'd maybe want one, but. They do alright with the ones by default. I mean, I'll, I'll quickly I'll quickly show you the avatar. Actually, it segues quite nicely into the uh, the profile options. Segue. So you get your avatar and shit like that, and there's a couple of different sets, and you can change the heads, change the arms, torso, legs, and uh, the set. There's only two sets at the moment. The basically male and female in it. And like I said, I won't be changing my male one because I spent so long on him, <laughs> but not really. But like I said, there's only basically four options to change between them, but... At least everybody's not quite the same. You will run into people that look similar or... Um, <laughs> or the same at least anyway, but it, it varies around a little bit. My only gripe about the avatars would be... Um, that is a completely different style to that. Very different style. So uh, maybe they could have normalised the styles a bit more, but you know, other than that, not too bad. Settings is your regular kind of deal. Nothing particularly of um, no. At least they've got fucking 720p resolution. Not every game does, oddly enough. And um, about that pretty much covers it. Oh, the deck builder. Deck builder needs serious work. That I will, however, lay into. Deck builder needs serious fucking work, man. The, I mean, dragging your cards over, yeah, all well and good and stuff like that. But there's no easy way of getting them fucking back over again. No right-click options or anything like that. Say I wanted to go like a dual color deck, and I've got my greens going off and my reds and uh, other shit like that. It's like, well, this is all well and good, but I have zero idea at the moment what distribution of red and green I've got. No idea. I've got no idea what my distribution of mana cost is, resource cost. I mean, there's online deck builders. And they've got it fine, you can see exactly, you know, what distribution of colour you've got, what distribution of cost you've got, and it's nice and easy, you know, I mean, it, it does tell you at least how many creatures and spells, structures, enchantments, and total and stuff like that, but, I mean, I'll give it some slack, still in beta, but, you know, for a deck builder, it's, I, I would say bare bones, it works, and that's about it. You can make a, you can build a deck with a deck builder, and that's about all you're going to get out of it. So it does what it says on the tin, but you would expect out of a TCG, you would expect a lot more out of it, and I do expect more out of that at some point. So the multiplayer side of stuff, you've got quick match, rank matches, and torments don't seem to be there yet. That's fair enough. Fucking hell, Claire spammed out the chat already. She does like trains. So yeah, quick matches and rank matches. It, from what I've gathered, you get about twenty. To 25% of the goal for a loss than what you do for a win. You might, for a win, seems average of what would you say, Claire? Anywhere between 250 to 350 gold. Average about 300. Average about 300 gold, and for a loss, you'll get like what? About 50 to 60? Something like that. So, quite punishing on the loss for the amount of gold, but not too bad. And ever so briefly, before we do get in there, <laughs> I will give them props on the actual microtransactions. It does seem to be more tilted towards playing more games than spending more cash. Like, say I bought more shards now, what could I do with it? I could buy more just for you cards, but then they're all sold out, and then what? Avatars? That's it. You can't buy the random scrolls with shards. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's 13 quid for the game and you get a pre-con deck of it and stuff like that, but... Like I say, I mean, you throw down, it's about £7 for the mid-range of shards. No, oh, just trying to find. Ah, oh yeah, I don't have shards for that. Buy more shards. Yeah, fuck it. I've, I've done it this way. So as you can see, that's about three pound fifty for six hundred shards. And say, like, you'd, you'd say you wanted to do what I did, where you, you get your free precon and then you want the other two precon decks. Seven quid for um, thirteen fifty shards. 
that'll get you both precon decks and you'll have shards left over as well. I mean, I've only got two 30 that left over there because I've already bought a couple of other cards as well. Another 120, so... What did I have left over? F um, free fitter. I need about free fitter. And that's how many shards I'd left over after buying the two precon decks. So, you're looking at about 20 quid if you want all three precon decks. You're looking at about 20 quid for the game, free precon decks, and you'll have about free fitter left over. So, uh, get you a few um, just for you cards, just to bulk out your deck a little bit. But, like I say, I mean, I'm not sure about the trading. Can you trade people shards for cards? It seems like you can only trade gold for shard, um, trade them gold, and I don't know if you can trade shards for gold in some shape or form. I, like I say, I haven't seen anywhere yet, but it doesn't mean there isn't. Anyway, let's just get a game, but like I say, I'll, I'll give it props on that at least. It's definitely tilted towards, I'll just... What, what colour are you playing first? Oh, well, fuck it, I'll go energy. But... Uh, it does seem tilted towards actually playing rather than paying. So I'll get your props on that. Usually it's quite obvious, you know, like, well, if you pay more, you're going to have an easier ride. This seems like you need, if you play more, you're going to have an easier ride. So not too bad on that. So it's my turn first. Jill, I have fun. So what the way it works is, if you play Magic the Gathering you'll see slight similarities but at the same time you'll say oh okay that is different you don't have land in this, what you do is you sacrifice cards now as you can see there I've got the option to sacrifice a card for a resource or sacrifice a card for two cards so obviously in turn one I've got zero resource so I'm going to have to sacrifice something so what I'll sacrifice is a mortar as cool as it is, no no because I want to show you that and I'll sac sacrifice bombard I'm not actually that keen on the um, the lobbers. I'll show you. I'll show you why. So you sacrifice a resource. Now I have one resource, basically the same as having a land in Magic the Gathering. Now I can cast anything with a one resource cost. In which case, a um, a useless contraption down the mid, just like that. It is useless, but it is a contraption. So and then you end turn. Now it's Claire's turn. Claire also sacrifices to re for resources. You're not going to get much out on turn one usually. So now it's turn two. And once again, you're going to have to sacrifice something, in which case, I want to... I didn't really want to sacrifice them. I like Ember Bonds. Enchanted creature... Uh, enchanted unit, sorry, receives two damage for attacking, so you can kind of, like, trick them a little bit, and if they attack, you can't stop something from attacking. They're going to take two damage, which is probably going to kill them, in some cases. But either way, let's sack it for another resource. Now, we've got two resources, which means we cast anything with two resource cost. In which case, the Gun Automaton is going to hide behind the wall. Coward! He is. He has a ranged attack, which means if anything's... Oh, sorry, I'll let my turn. If anything's got, like, um, spiky, which is basically, like, fawns. You know, if you attack it, you'll take damage. But if it's a ranged attack, obviously you don't attack it in melee, so you don't take fawns damage. As you can see with the Hellspitter Mortar, it's got the, um, the lobber trait, which means it will hit one random square. It, you can't... It won't attack the line. Like, say this, um, this little gun automaton here. Yeah, sorry, I should mention about the actual, um, sorry, I'll just be one second, Claire. Mention about the stats on something as well. You can, as you can see there, you can move each turn as well. But the, um, the sword is basically its damage. How much damage it'll do on an attack. The heart is how much health it's got, how many hits it can take. And the little hourglass is its cooldown. Now, unlike, say, Magic the Gathering, if you're used to that, where stuff will attack every turn, if it can, if it wants to. It doesn't quite work like that in scrolls. What happens is, say when I spawned it, it had a two, two second cooldown. Now it's got back to my turn, it's only got a one second cooldown. It ticks down to zero. When it hits zero, it will attack. You can't stop it. It will always attack. And it will attack down the line unless it specifies something else, or unless it's like like the mortar which will attack a random square. And there's other little bits and bobs as well, but let's just keep it simple. So it, it ticks down every turn, and then it attacks by automatic reasons. Automatic reasons it attacks. You know, it's you can't tell it not to, can you? You can't say it not. It, it just it automatically attacks. So bit of a weird mechanic, bit of a difference compared. I am running out of time. Oh dear. Um, let us sack that, and I shall throw down a health spitter mortar again right at the back. It's a cool unit, isn't it? it. Looks nice. I think that looks cool. Sorry, sorry about that, Claire. But as you can see, there I've just summoned the health spitter mortar. It's got a two um, a two turn cooldown. 
So it won't attack the next turn, but the turn after that, it will. It's got 5 damage and 6 health. The structure is just a wall, so it doesn't attack. Some walls do, but that one, uh, some, sorry, some structures do, but that one doesn't. 4 health, but no attack. Claire's wall there. As spiky, so if something attacks it, it'll take damage, but in this case, it won't, because it's a ranged attack from the gun automaton. Golem skin. When golem skin comes into play, sacrifice all your structures, and no. But you do gain attack and health equal to the number of structures sacrificed, in which case, that's a structure. And that's a structure, but that's not. So I'd gain 2 damage and 2 health permanently. On the, um, on the creature, because it seems that's an enchantment, it sticks around, but I'm not going to be doing that. Instead, I'm going to sack it, so I can get out the destroyer. It is a uh, artillery structure. Claire thinks she's so clever, putting that wall right in front of my attacking thing, but I'm going to move it at the last second. And I moved it to the... No, I didn't. I moved it to uh, an okay place. I'm going to put a structure there. Now, as you can see, it's cooldown tick down at zero, so now it will attack no matter what I do. I can't say, don't attack, bro. It's going to do it. But you're always going to want to attack anyway. So as soon as I end my turn, it'll resolve combat. Shoot that sister of the fox. Sister of the dead. I'm looking very artillery-like on my side. But you can see the differences. The, um... The Hellspitter Mortar will hit any square. It's like battleships. Imagine like Battleship, the game. It's like that. It'll hit any square on there. Hit, miss, etc. Whereas the catapults and some other different stuff, they hit a certain area only. Like, that only hits there, which is a bit stupid of me. Let's... I should have rolled it forward one. I think it would have hit a bigger area then, but e either way. That's, yeah, I should have put it there, shouldn't I? No, no worries. But you can see the Hellspit of Mortar is going to attack this turn, seems so it's got a zero cooldown, as is the, um, the Destroyer. In fact, the Destroyer's got a very low cooldown. The wall will never attack on Claire's next turn. You see, that's why they're flashing. It's basically saying, next turn, these bros are going to attack. So you better watch out. So the four damage from the Kinfolk Brave will annoy the fuck out of me, especially when... If you put an enchantment on it... She's fucking stolen what I said to her, man. She was like, oh, I don't rate these Kinfolk Brave. I'm like, well, you know, two mana for a 2-2 two -two isn't bad. But the beauty about it is it's got a one cooldown. So every other turn, that motherfucker's attacking. So in she Every turn? Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, um... If you enchant it, it's going to be doing a shit ton of damage. And the um, Nature's Prophet is going to be attacking as well. The cannon can't hit him, actually. Yes, oh, the, the, the mortar can, but the, um, the bucket can't. Let us see, now what I'm going to do is Concentrate Fire is pretty good. Target unit with range of Lobbin will make an extra attack after its next attack. Which is, you know what, let's do it. Just We're going to throw down some. Hit me. I, I don't think I will hit. But I'm go I'm gonna try anyway. Oh wait, oh, it's just target. Oh, it's just one unit. So, so oh shit, 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 fuck, fuck, fuck. Ah! Too busy talking shit. No, no, don't skip a go. It's all right. I could have got me ether pump out there. But no worries, no worries. Like I say, sorry about the um, the length of the turns there, guys. I'm just trying to explain everything and you know, like so you know what's going off and etc. Like I say, it's not particularly complex, like, it's like, after watching, like, one game, you can get the gist of what's going off. Especially after, you, like, if you buy it and then you play the tutorial, you, you're good to go. I'll give it props on that. It's very straightforward. Very easy to learn. You just, just profit my fucking artillery there. Tick bomb. Get rid of that structure. And I'm gonna replace that useless contraption. It's back. Spew! Look at that fucking kinfolk brave, man. It's a proper bastard attacking like every turn. Very, very good. It's exactly what I said to Claire, man. I mean. It's nothing special. It's a 2 2 of 2 mana, pretty standard, but his cooldown makes him very. That's. that's she, she was like, well, why the hell is that? It's, that, it's very difficult to tell, tell what the rarity of the cards are. Like, I'll show you. That's a common. That's an uncommon. That's a rare. Very difficult to tell, isn't it? But, I mean, you, you, can, you, you can get. You can roughly see. You can put another enchantment on the fucker. 
But it increased his um, cooldown there, then it count uh, countdown by one. But still, it makes him nasty. He's a 6 4. He doesn't have a relentless, does he? No. Good. Um. E for pump. I have to save that guy. Is there something else I was going to say? Okay, with what? Oh, yeah, the rarity of the cards. Oh, god damn. Yeah, the rarity of the cards, basically the way that I work it out is if you look at the corners of the scroll, blank, it's a common. Then if you look at and you see like lines and stuff on it, you know, a bit fancier, it's an uncommon. If you see fancy lines and like wear and tear, it's a rare. So basically the fancier it is in the top corners, you know, j blank, slight line, completely full corner. It's a, it's a rare. That's how it goes up in that kind of thing. Hey, up first blood on me, um, on my relics. Back again. <laughs> it just keeps coming back. Ah, oh, she got brother at fucking wolf that man, like wolf factories. Rather than attacking the consumer of wolf, it gets very cluster fucked. That catapult's not in range. Did you put an enchantment on your bush, say, when that bush dies, another bush comes in its place? Oh, Fuck's sake. <laughs> Ilfawn Seed or something. <laughs> when an enchanted unit dies, un fucking put an Ilfawn there. It's like, don't do it on a bush. Don't do it on an Ilfawn bush. I mean, I know, I, know it, I know it makes sense, you know, like, the seeds from the bush, so when it dies, another bush comes, like, but... I, I really made a mistake putting that catapult on the back rank. If it had been there, I could have been sieging there at least. It's destroying the front rank, but my front rank's getting destroyed. In fact, I don't think I'm even going to be able to attack with that Aoife pump before it gets hit by the Jarl. Not the Jarl, sorry, the Kinfo Brave. No, he's going to get through to it. No, it's not. Plating on the structure? Hit that fucking kinfolk guy. Oh my god. Oh my god. So close, man. It's a big clusterfuck of shit. I'm not managing to do it. What are you gonna do? Veteran? Oh, you bitch. You know how much damage that'd have done? That'd have wiped out all your fucking. your natures of profit with that thing. Right, you cow. Of course, now he's fucked. But, you know, at least I've got one of your fucking things down. You know, I've not actually managed to beat Claire yet in this. That fucking, that growth deck is very good. I mean, they're all pretty good, but I, I really struggle to take out... Once the druids get rolling, Brother of the Wolf thing, I really struggle to take them down. I mean, I've got removal in this deck, but just not enough of it. I mean, that's one thing I'll say. There's deck building, but the problem is you can't get enough cards to actually build a deck, because you can't... Unlike Magic the Gathering, which is one of the good things about it as well, you can't finance, you know, to get more cards very easily. So the problem is... You can't actually deck build for a long time, can you? But you want multiples, don't you? You want to like maximum card, uh, maximum of one type of card you can have is three. That 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 mortar is crap. It just doesn't. This is, you know, I'm glad it did that. Uh, do you know, I've never had a Hellspitter Mortar hit anything. Never. Never, ever, ever had it hit anything. I love the unit, it looks fucking awesome. But I've never had it hit anything, and that catapult was in the wrong place entirely. If it had been forward a square, it'd have been sieging the fuck. I I'll never fall for that mistake again. If it had been there, it'd have been fucking battering all that shit. She'd have to come and sort it out. And it'd have made a big difference. So look at all the wolves are out now. That's fucking. It's gonna be hard. Very difficult. 
Sacrifice that for two cards, see if we can get anything better. See, I don't be, I've only got one structure to sacrifice though. Not so great. But it's, ah, uh, fuck it, let's use it. It's only one structure, but it's plus one, plus one to him, and I want doing no else anyway. Gun Automaton's gonna die. I'm. Uh, you can press control as well, so you've got a constant display of health and um, relic health. I can see why they don't do that by default, cause it, 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 uh, but I, I, I've got to be honest, I like having it displayed all the time. It's nice, but you can look at the amount of health she's got on the board now and more shit coming out, and she can spawn more shit. It's fucking bad news. Very bad news. That's one relic almost down. I know it's pretty cool as well, but the problem is, this is a gripe that I've actually got with the game. Nice, get down, you fucking wolf bastard. It's a problem. That I've a gripe that I've got with the game. Everything's cooldown is too low. So what happens is you reach like a critical mass of units. And then the other player can't do anything because you put down a unit and then it gets swarmed by the other team. Like, it, what, even like a big unit, something that's got like seven health, it just gets swarmed. It comes down with a two turn cooldown. All their stuff either has the same cooldown, but probably doesn't. It's probably going to attack in a turn or, or whatever before the, other, before the thing you've just placed gets to attack. So it gets killed. Most of the time, it gets killed before. It even, like, has a cool, uh, countdown reduction of one. Before it's even counting down one turn, it dies. Which is a little bit dodger. It won't matter anyway. There's, there's too much swarm shit. I mean, I can't get my stuff... You can destroy those bottom three and I can't really get down to sort them out. But yeah, like I said, this is a problem that I've got. I mean... I'd, I'd have liked to have summoned that down bottom to do some defense, but we all that shit attacking, it'd die before it could do anything. It'd be literally, it'd be dead by that guy. If I summoned it there, or even there, sorry, or anywhere else, I could have summoned it up at the top or at the bottom there. Claire had a really good position in the middle with the um, Kinfolk Brave. So if I summoned it anywhere else but the top edges, it'd have, it'd have just died. See, like now I've got to move him down. And it's it's not gonna do it's not gonna do no. Cause look at this. All that shit's gonna probably I mean I might kill one, but that's it, and then it's just gonna get swarmed and killed and then threw her to the shrine. It reaches this critical mass. And you just no matter what you summon, it's not enough. You can't get it out in time. Not unless you fuck it up anyway. If other player fucks up, obviously you can get it out, but you know, if the player's on the ball, you can't do it. Couple of goo. The units look really nice, though. I mean, I was dead here regardless of getting units out, but like I so, you can just tell, can't you? Once you get out about four, five more units than what they've got, and you've got them in the middle, then and you you're playing right and rearranging your units, you are dead. There is no comeback. Not that I've noticed anywhere. I mean, with mass removal, like there is some spells that do like um, a lot of damage in areas. But that's the problem at the moment, this is what I'm saying. You know, I could counter Claire's deck by getting... Uh, there's some spells that do like two or three damage in an area. I could take a lot of removal. GG. I could take a lot of removal spells. But the problem is, I can't get the removal spells yet. Because you can't buy them. you just got to like play and like hope you get them in random scroll packs. So you could try to trade for them and stuff like that, I guess. But not easy. So you can't build the deck yet. I mean, it, it's it's good and it's bad. 
Because at the same time, in Magic the Gathering, it just destroys your wallet. Hard. Really destroys your wallet, like fuck. Anybody that's playing Magic the Gathering will completely agree with me there. It's, it's just devastating. It'll rinse every last bit of money out of you. And then the next set of cars will come along and they'll spike it. So, there's like fucking a shit ton of cars in the next set of cards that are just so much better than the last. Right, let's try... Let's try order. But, like I say, it's good that you have to play to kind of build up your deck. But at the same time, it really does cripple deck building. Like, I, I can see the fault in Claire's, you know, it's like a lot of stuff in it. It's not a fault, but it's just the, um, it's like, it's almost like weenies in it. Like, there's a lot of low health stuff. So with mass removal and strong creatures, you could sort it out. But the problem is, you can't build the deck to counter it yet. So it is, it's good you've got to play to build the, oh shit, is it me? It is indeed. Um, I'll get rid of purification. Well, yeah, Claire did indeed um, just say then. You win the game, as you just saw, by destroying three of the five relics, these things on the side. You don't need to kill all five, just three. Look, are you um, pure energy? What does Resonant Elm do? Right, let's um, sack another purification. And we'll get out. A infantryman. Up top. Yeah, like I say, victory condition, three out of the five. I'm not sure if you get more gold if you, if you did more damage to the others or not. Seems like you do, like, the more damage you do overall and the more shit you do, you get more bonus gold at the end, but don't hold me to that, I'm not sure. But like I say, in a nutshell, it's good how you don't have to pay out the ass to play this game. At the same time, oh fuck. It's, um, it's also difficult to get build, you know, deck building on the go because you can't pay. So if you wanted to pay, it's quite frustrating. But if you didn't want to pay, it's fine. So it just depends on you, really. And either way, patience will sort it out, so, you know, not too bad. Hmm. What should I want to get rid of? Oh, I'll have to sack that. So, put some plate armor on him. He's got plate armor. But yeah, the the order units have this nice mechanic, basically, basically of if you're on the same row as them, or not even that, some of the higher ones just like adjacent to them. But they have bonuses for basically stacking them around each other. So, oh, first blood. So as you can see, um, as you see with that one. Anything else in the same row gains one attack, as with this one, anything in the same row gains one health. So what we're we gonna get rid of here? I'm gonna sack him, and I'm gonna get him out. And he's relentless. But I'm gonna put him down, down hither. As you can see there, he took the damage from Claire's Everbonds. Or Etherbonds, sorry. Oh, sorry, Emberbonds. There we go, you got it. Yeah, I got it. Yo, mispronounced fucking Ether, and then it's not Ether, it's Ember. Oh, again! Oh, a different guy. My guy's an enchantment, though. Of plate armor. The enchanted unit. All damage. Oh, combat. Oh, sorry, it's combat damage. I put that on him thinking it was going to reduce Emberbonds, but it didn't. It doesn't do that. Right, he's going to attack next turn and I don't want to be taking damage from him, so I'm going to move down one. 
then what do we want to do? I think I'm going to sack him for a couple of cards. See what I get. Ah. Oh, that worked out quite well. Oh, fairly well. I have got a little armor. Oh my god. I bet it hits me on turn fucking, well not turn one, but you know, the first time it shoots, it's gonna fucking hit me. Just a bit cheeky. F flip Claire's uh, automaton down there, and there you go. If I'm hey, if I'm gonna lose a unit, you're you're gonna use one, uh, lose one as well. That's how it's happening. So we've got plus one elf going on to these two guys from the infantryman at the back, and I've got another infantryman up here. I can hit my guy down there. I um, I do want this guy, but I also need to get some pressure going down a bit faster. This is what, yeah, this is, this will be fine. Let us go down the mid. Like that. So I get rid of the ghoul launcher. Certainly in a vulnerable position, though. Yep. There's definitely timing to realizing, like, right, it's two turns until that guy cools down. Do I need to get him in position? Like, can I just wait and then move him when he's going to attack and blag him out? Oh, that's way too close considering mine never hits. Sack again. Yeah, 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 this is what we wanted. This is what we wanted. A royal spearman. Bit of extra health for him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what the fuck happened? What did you do to him? Do you ember bond him? Bitch. What's that about? You've, you've had like, f you've had three of them. Three fucking ember bonds. You can't have any more than that now. At least, at least I know this. There can be no more ember bonds. Ember bonds doing two damage when the unit attacks. Like, say you can't say, "Whoa, dude, you've got ember bonds on you. Don't attack. If you move, you're gonna die." They're like, "No, I need to attack the fucking relics and the run. No matter what you do, you can't stop it." I like com copper automatons. They um, do they do a lot of damage, but they die after um, attacks. So they do like four damage, like a suicide goblin. But you see, I'm a bit worried about that because she could. If I move it down there, it attacks next turn. No matter where I move this lot or him, they can be rinsed by four damage of the copper automaton. So what I do is, I move them all out of the way, and then put an obelisk. Uh, and I go, fuck off. And I shall start work on that. See, what I do is I, I get like a six in my hand, and then I rush like fuck to get it out. And sometimes that's not the way you want to go, you want to get shit onto the board. It's like I was saying before, if you get shit onto the board, it can be hard for people to get rolling then. Like there, I had so many options of stuff to do. I mean, it's gonna fucking rinse that middle relic. Not kill it, but it did a lot of damage. But because I had options of stuff to do, she couldn't. You should. I suspect if I'd not put that obelisk there, you'd have gone for the um, 
the Royal Spearman, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd, you'd have got somebody if I'd have moved them all out of the way and protected them. Oh, it's annoying, isn't it? Especially when you put Bombard, she played um, con Concentrate Fire, sorry. So it makes an extra attack, but it's still done fucking it. It's like, you know, no damage doubles is still no damage. It's fucking annoying, isn't it? I know, I, I, I fucking feel that pain. I would save that pushback, but I'll get this guy out. Honourable General. When Honourable General's cooldown becomes zero, all adjacent units, not just the ones on the line, all adjacent units have their cooldown decreased by two, so he's a bit of a fucking arsehole. He's very good. What you do is... You got something like that. And, um... I'm gonna start work on getting my dudes down there as well. That's my plan of attack. Take the top one and the bottom whatever's. I don't care. I'm working on two at the moment, the bottom two. You got three scrolls and five resource. You gotta have something nasty there. I really do like the way that the units look though. I think they look really fucking nice. Like the Honorable General I was like scroll wheeling to zoom in there. It does not work. You cannot scroll wheel to zoom in in this game. But yeah, I'm very pleasing at. Did you just fucking do it, my guy? Burned him! Bitch. And also, like, say that guy had a. a Wii's cooldown, I thought, well, if move him this turn, and then next turn, he's got a free run now. Into the uh, one of the bottoms. It's gonna wait that, which isn't fantastic, like, but you know, better than nothing. We shall put a spearman. Wait a minute. What's it? Wait, wait, wait. Dude, dude, yeah, I know Spiker. That oh, is relentless. No, I'll put down the um, spear bro down there. And um, that's a fairly sizable attack incoming there, Claire. Um, I'm actually going to try to put some more damage down on this just for a moment. There you go. We got to concentrate fire. It's gonna hit summer. I swear to god, like, I've never had one hit. It's gotta hit summer, Claire. There you go. Fucking hell. That's nasty. It hurts like shit if it does it. It's, it's fucking evil. See, this is, this is what I'm on about. It's reached this kind of like massive nastiness. And now every time you put something on the board, I'm gonna home in on it and get it dead and remove it. You, you can just tell. But at least we showed all the factions. I played um, energy and you played energy. Um, you played energy and growth, didn't you? And I played energy and order, so at least we showed all the different factions what they're, what they're roughly about. Ow! Like I say, energy is really good at removal, you know, just like, nuke! It's like red. It's pretty much red from Magic the Gathering. You see Spark there? Oh, you bitch. I like that crossbow guy. That's a wave. It's definitely coming. Let's move this guy down. I really want to get this spiky guy somewhere forward. But I don't think it really matters. Uh, Vengeance Veil, I guess. I'll sacrifice that next turn. So we've got 
for five damage going to that bottom one, so that's that dead. Yeah, we'll do that. Fuching! It's nasty, isn't it, when it cools down? Does he have an enchantment on him as well when he takes. Yeah. When the enchanted unit receives damage, its cooldown decreases by one. So imagine if you like, you take a couple of hits of um, damage, so he's on a one cooldown, and then you've got something that heals him. So basically, you've taken three damage. And then his cooldown's one, so every turn he's attacking, and every turn he's making everybody else's cooldown reduced by two, which is probably. For all these units, they've all got two turn cooldowns. So he's gonna make everybody attack every turn with him. So you put him in the middle of an hexagon. He's got like, he's gonna have himself and one, two, three, four, five, six units attacking every turn. Nasty. Well, that copper automaton is gonna do a bit of damage. Plating, eh? Do not. Oh, busting a vest on the commander. Busting a vest on the general, so. Yeah. His cooldown is decreased by one. And if he takes any damage, if he takes any damage now, he's gonna be attacking every turn. That's pretty fucking nasty. Let's. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a spell. Boo! It's not an enchantment. It's just uh, temporarily it's done that. I shall kabonk! And I'm going to reduce my combat damage. And it's going to attack next turn. Do I want to absorb it? No, actually, I want to take the damage. Yeah. Definitely want to take the damage. It'll sting him down to free life, but at the same time, like. Why didn't I move my units that turn? Oh man, I just really fucked up quite royal. Oh no, not royal, but not great. I should have moved my units up. Hmm. If I'd have moved that spearman up there, that guy'd have given me an extra health, so he'd have survived the copper automatons for damage. Bad play. I smoked my e-cig in disappointment at myself. It's the mortars that are let down. They take up a creature fucking slot when it could have been doing something active and then they don't hit. It's hit once in 15 fucking turns almost. Oh, there we go. Now I'm actually a bit worried about my commander's damage. Now it's... I'd have rather taken the damage on the fucking spearman, definitely. But saying that, his cooldown is now pretty nasty. It'll take three damage. It'll be down to, f um, be down to four life. But that means the um, the douche at the back can kill him. All adjacent units have their cooldown decreased by one. Well, they're all on the same fucking cooldown at the moment anyway. Are oh, you bitch? You're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to do that. Have double cooldown. <laughs> that's alright, that's alright, you're welcome. Right. See, that's because I've increased the cooldown double on that big, um, it's a cool unit. The Cannon Automaton. Very nasty. Ranged attack and um, all damage dealt to it is reduced by one, so it's pretty fucking nasty, basically. Um, and that, that guy won't do no damage to it. Oh, that guy. But now I, I can kite it around the board. I can go up to that top one if I want to. Destroyer! Plating! I play a destroyer.
<laughs> it's, it's a good fight. Hey, oh. What do you mean? Let's set that for a couple of cards. I'll save that. Crown of Strength. Oh, definitely. That's, that's, that's a 5 9 there. That's a 5 9. See, I'm just wondering the way that I want to work with this. Has that still got plating? No. Hmm. I'm just wondering how I want to play this. If I want to... Right. Okay, okay. See, I just wonder if I want to batter through this bottom shit. Or I want to try go to the top and get out of the fucking way of it. There's a lot of fucking elf down there. Right, either way. Let's get into a better position to do whatever anyway. Right. Shouldn't have really done that, it's gonna hit something though. I'm just hoping it. Aw, oh, man! I ain't whip McDude. Oh man, I didn't realise. How did you get that automaton to attack this turn? How did he attack that turn? He had massive cooldown going. Dying this fucking turn though. You could say, oh, if you're not going to cast it, why not just fucking... Well, you should cast it, shouldn't you, as soon as I had spare resource, but it's like... You've got to think ahead sometimes, like... It's like, well, I'll, I don't want to sacrifice callback, just in case I want to callback my general. So I'll use that as a sacrifice card next turn. It's not a case of like, well, if you've got resource, you may as well cast it. How, did, how is his cooldown so fucking epic at the moment? He's on a free turn cooldown, even though I had... When enchanted unit receives damage, its cooldown decreases by one. It's like, what about all that shit? Where's that gone? I'm sure, its cooldown should be well low by now. Concentrate fire. Splat. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. I got it. Uh, I want to sacrifice it for two cats anyway, just see what else. <laughs> GG. This guy's gonna hit this guy, and then that guy's because he's got four attack, he's gonna kill that, and then this top guy hasn't attacked yet. Whoops. But Claire can't get a unit up there in time. Every well, you can't get a unit up there, period, they're all structures. Ah, yes, it depends if you can summon something. Okay. Scatter gunner.
Well, that's a good fight. You put up a better fight than what my energy deck did. Oh, fucking hell. Frost of wind! fucking energy deck plays that ain't it like two shocks in a row so <laughs> it just dealt me him as well couldn't believe that shit <laughs> exactly what was required you see I will, will, will be worried about the destroyer killing my general like you could say why well, didn't I combat my general if I get destroyed he gets a damage reduction all combat damage to enchanted unit is decreased by one because of the plate armor so it'll only um, it'll only do one damage and then I'll recall him if it goes on that long because the automaton will probably kill itself on... Oh no, it won't kill itself, will it? I don't know if this is going to work. Wait, what you done? Oh, you just decreased their cooldown by one. Don't even... Don't even! Yes! <laughs> you bitch! I wasn't sure if that was going to work. You bitch. I didn't get a chance to fucking recall There's him there. There's still life for the old girl yet! I was... I, I had like... I had a callback save just for that. You bitch. Wicking stones. The problem with stone is that it's stationary. We fixed that. Yeah, good fight, Ikla. Definitely. I had to proper spread out my damage. Like you've got one at one and one at four, and like say that were good removal. That I think I maybe ramped because my general has so many enchantments on him. I wanted to run him down as low as possible. I mean, he got hit by so much by that destroyer. I shouldn't have had him there. Shouldn't have had him on that rank. He should have been at a back rank. Night ogre. Don't hit that crossbow guy. Yeah, the obelisk is guaranteed to take damage from the destroyer return. Relentless is that motherfucking ogre guy as well. Hmm, when am I gonna. What do I wanna do? Yeah, you've done well. <laughs> Definitely. It's, it's fucking, it's down to a wire, so, well, it matters a lot anyway. I don't like burn. Bitch. I like that guy, he had, he, had a, he had a lot of attack, I liked him. What did he, oh, he's gone now, but I think he had to attack when his cooldown reached zero.
<laughs> Not yet, but soon. Shame I put my wall right in the way for that destroyer. I should have got rid of that destroyer long ago. He actually did quite a lot to that destroyer. He must have hit my, uh, my general like four or five times or something like that and everything else. Oh, it's rigged! Rigged to blow! Four damage, Nasta. Do not. Oh. Right. Oh. No, 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 no. I could still do it. I, I did have another plan. What my plan was. To, uh, you, you kiboshed it when you put down that useless contraption there. What I was going to do is I was going to move my crossbow guy down in front of the um, the vanguard. The crossbow guy was going to get rid of your catapult for 4 damage, and then the vanguard was going to get buffed up to 5 damage with something I've got around somewhere. I can't remember where it's gone now. Focus. Plus 3 attack, it was going to finish it. But you kiboshed it. So, so what I'm going to do instead is get rid of your golem, make new orders, Yeah, this is what I wanted to do. I think. Yeah, move him up there. And then move him up there. And there we go. Whew. <laughs> Considering it's me about like critical mass and it. Oh, I only had fucking zero seconds left there almost as well. Because it's like, oh, critical mass and it was had to come back. You did a good job of actually fucking stopping me there. That's. That's the only time I've seen, both from me playing and watching Claire play, that's the only time I've seen somebody even manage to look like they were coming back. I've never played that decky. <laughs> that's the only time I've seen it. Usually when they've got like five, six units on you, that's it. You just can't do no... But even then, it, 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 was, it was hard to get anything out. But then again, like say, she managed it, she did a good job though. I've got to damage my units, dude. What's that? You 60, he did 60 damage? Yeah. Holy shit. Like I say, Red's good at removal. There were a lot of damage done, but I, I, um... I don't know why it was so slow near the end to get the damage down. You know, the damage just... I, I did loads of damage right early on to the relics, and then it was really slow near the end to get the damage onto them. I think that it was... The, some of your removal stuff killed out a lot of my shit that was going to do it and move it around, and then, um... That thing you did, which wiped out my general and about two other units with it, I misplaced my um, my stuff as well. It got that you got so much that destroyer still lived in. Even though it was my plan to destroy it, it still lived in the end. It was there from so was it like turn two or three, and it. Destroyer was there for about It did a lot of damage. Did that thing though? It. Yeah, the mortar was useless. Yeah. It hit like one thing in how many turns was it? How many rounds? Unfortunately, the O of victory is obscuring the round number. But other than that, it did a shit ton of damage. Uh, sorry, the catapult did, the destroyer. The mortar. I really love how they look at it. I like how they act, but it's so chaotic and random. Yeah. It just. You don't get your mileage out of it. The catapults, the lobbers are better. You know, the ones that have like a direct like area that they're gonna hit. That's so much better. Would you have the same amount of scrolls? Pretty much only one difference. I played five more units, you played four more enchantments. 
I did 36 idle damage, you did 8, but she did like 60 fucking unit damage to my 26. But like I said, there you go guys, scrolls. Like I said, it's um, a TCG, very easy to pick up and play and get into. I mean, that was quite a long game actually, compared to usual. I mean, I'm glad that it lasted, it lasted the perfect amount of time, oddly enough, but... It's um, it's usually a bit faster than that last game was. Clip up a really good fight there, and like I said, I was, I was glad to see that you know, because I was really under the impression like once you get four or five units on somebody, good job. I mean, good luck. Good job. Good, good job, and good luck to the other guy. He's not going to manage to get rid of him. You just don't have enough ways of getting rid of him. But, you know, you, you'd, you I think you had the right amount of removal there to stop some of my uh, my weenies, and the um, you shut me down a little bit. I was doing really well, it looked like it was over in like two turns, one at two or three turns, and it went on for another 20 or summer because of that. So yeah, it was uh, well played and well fought. Good job. <laughs> but yeah, nice looking. I like the music in the actual thing as well. Shame there's only one track, but the music when you're actually fighting is pretty okay for it as well, pretty inoffensive and nice. Deck building needs some work, it really does. The deck builder itself needs serious fucking work, it needs a lot more options on there. And I think... That it, you could say, oh, it needs more cards and stuff like that. It's like, it's to be expected, you know. It's only just, any. I think any TCG that starts out probably needs a bit of work in the card department. So I'm going to cut you some slack on that. But very fun. Like I say, a mix of like TCG and... Um, there's other games like this as well, isn't it? Like the hexagon-based kind of ones. What what, what are the clerks? Um, Claire knows them, but plays quite a lot of them. The Magic the Gathering Tactics. Magic the Gathering Tactics, Heroes of Might and Magic. Pox Nora. There's, there's a few that are quite in that similar vein, but I thought the the way they've gotten around being land strangled in Magic the Gathering, by you can just sacrifice any scroll for land, for a resource, stuff like that, that is very elegant. And also being card strangled, you just sacrifice one card and get two. They're very, very elegant solutions of getting around there. I've never played so far and gone, well, sometimes you get like a bad hand. Mulligan would be, we've said this before, haven't we? Mulligan would be nice. At least one mulligan. Just one mulligan would be perfect. And um, that would be nice, but you know, other than that, I really do appreciate what they've done with the um, the resource and you know, being resource strangled and card strangled. Very elegant and simple solution to the problem, and it works. Never thought, oh, I don't have enough resource. We'll sacrifice a scroll for it. Oh, I don't have enough cards. Sacrifice a scroll for it. It's not like Magic the Gathering when it's like, I can't draw any cards and I keep getting discarded. I can't get no land out, it keeps getting destroyed, or I just haven't drawn any. Or I keep drawing too many fucking creature cards and not enough land, or too much land and not enough creatures and stuff like that. Very, they've put some thought into it, and I will give it a lot of props on that front, definitely. Definitely. But yeah, very solid, very solid. Seems to reward playing more than paying, at least so far anyway. So, again, props to that. Like I said, a few flaws here and there, but it looks promising, it does. Looks very promising. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. See you dudes!